Happy Families podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. The research is solid on this, that it grooms boys to consider their sexual entitlement more important than respect, empathy, care of girls. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. G'day, this is Dr. Justin Coulson. I'm the author of six books about raising happy families here with my wife and podcast partner. Mum to our six daughters, Kylie, Mrs. Happy Families. Uh, We've got a really big day today, Kylie, talking to a special guest. Really excited. We've got Melinda Tankard Reese with us today, and we're talking about a really important subject. Yeah, so Melinda has been uh, writing about uh, issues around uh, sex, pornography, consent, uh, and, and the, the really big heavy stuff that we have to deal with with our children around sexualization of girls. I, I would say Melinda is one of Australia's foremost girl and women champion, somebody who is really agitating and saying the world is not good enough to women and girls at the moment. And Melinda, we're so delighted to uh, have you join us on the podcast today. Thank you for being with us. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Melinda, for people who are not following the news at the moment, can you just outline the situation that we're, we're finding ourselves in right now? Yes, for sure. A former New South Wales private school girl, Chanel Contos started a poll on her Instagram asking other young women, had they been uh, assaulted, had they been sexually harassed by their peers, their male peers, uh, primarily in Sydney private schools. That's how it started. And she was just overwhelmed with responses, which currently stand at over 5,000 accounts of sexual uh, harassment, of inappropriate touching, of forced sex acts as a result of uh, guys taking advantage of young women who are under the influence of of alcohol, uh, sexual coercion, coercive control. And those stories just keep growing. And it has sparked a national conversation around uh, consent and respectful relationships and why things are as bad as they are. And I'm so grateful to Chanel for for doing this. The petition has now been expanded uh, nationwide and more stories are coming in every day. When these stories first started emerging as a result of Chanel's petition, there were a lot of expressions of shock and amazement and surprised. And I, I must admit, I was not surprised at all because those stories echoed what young women have been telling me in over a decade of, of my encounters with them in schools and which I've documented previously, including uh, for the ABC. Uh, stories of daily sexual harassment, of being groped, being touched, being harassed on the school bus on the way home, of demands for uh, naked selfies, pressures to engage in sex acts that girls don't want or enjoy, uh, boys demanding from young women what they had seen in porn. And the stories are getting worse and they are getting worse younger. I'm dealing with 12-year-olds who have been blackmailed to send images to older boys. I am now being asked to speak to grades three, four, five, and six. And I never imagined that when I first started speaking on these issues that I would be asked now to go into primary schools to speak about sexualization and porn culture and how young children can protect themselves from what is essentially a giant experiment on the developing sexual templates of our children and adults, we have allowed this to happen and we need to own it. The, the, the fruits of it are clear now and we've all allowed this to happen. As a mum of six girls, Melinda, this just... Oh, just terrifies. It's so terrifying. It is terrifying. I have three daughters. So yeah. I understand and what you're saying. I, I'm wondering, you know, why does this problem even exist? Why are we having to deal with this in 2021? My argument is that a sexist culture grooms sexist boys uh, and we have allowed a sexist culture to teach our boys about women and girls and what's acceptable. And that's obviously been, been harmful. The porn industry is the biggest, the world's largest department of education. And it, the research is solid on this, that it grooms boys to, considers their sexual 
entitlement more important than respect, empathy, uh, care of girls. It trains them to believe that no means yes. It trains them to be aroused by cruelty, brutality, domination and aggression. The porn industry is corrosive to connection. Uh, it emotionally disconnects boys from from their kindness, from their humanity. And it's a, a tragedy for them. It's a tragedy for girls. It's a tragedy for all of us, really. Melinda, I, I, I'm sitting here listening to what you're saying and I've, I've listened to you talk in conferences before. We've we've been in the same conferences sharing the stage on, on different topics. What you're describing is not new to me and yet I've got this lump in my throat and my eyes are wet as I as I consider the just the tragedy that yes. is unfolding in the lives of our children and for them for for so many of them not all but for so many of them this is just normal this is what it's like to be a grade ten kid that goes to a party and sees someone getting blackout drunk and um, correct so what this petition that uh, Miss Contos has started is really about is saying we need to do better with consent and sex education in schools so that this stuff mm-hmm. stops. But both you and I are on the same page on this. We both argue that consent education is actually setting the bar really low and and in many ways it doesn't work anyway because that kid who's sitting next to his girlfriend in that sex ed class uh, the the next Friday night, he doesn't really care what consent is because he wants to have this fantasy fulfilled. Why do you say that consent is a low bar and it's not enough? So I I need to start by saying I do speak on consent and respectful relationships, and I do think they are very important. My concern is that it may be seen as some kind of magic bullet that will deal with the mess that we are in. And if we do not address the conditioning role of pornography, uh, if we don't address all the other harmful cultural forces that have led us to this point, what I've argued is that the uh, consent education will be limited in its effectiveness. I argued this in a two thousand two and a half thousand word essay that was just published by the ABC two days ago. If your listeners are interested in it, yeah, we're going to link to that in the show notes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, but the fact is that the best program in the world at the moment uh, will not have the effect we need it to if the other elements aren't addressed. And I'll give you a, 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 an example. I read through hundreds of those testimonials and what I realised was that quite a number of the young women said that their abuser, their offender, the guy who took advantage of them had sat in the same consent education classes already. The thing that's standing out to me as I'm listening to you, Melinda, is just why is it all of a sudden that we've got this idea that sex education and consent is actually supposed to happen in our schools? Is this not something that we as parents should be, you know, uh, safeguarding our kids against in the home? Look, it takes a village to raise a child and this type of rela- this type of education has to happen at every level. Yes, it has to happen in the home, of course. Parents have to step up to the plate. My concern at the moment is that it's too much for parents on our own because the stories I'm hearing include stories from parents who were doing the right thing. They had every internet filtering device. They had the devices in public spaces. They took the phones off the kids at night. They were doing all of those things. And of course they should, we all should. However, what do you do about the fact that children are being exposed to hardcore torture, rape, that is important in the schoolyard, on the school bus, on the way home, at the school camp, at the friend's house where they don't have the same monitoring as they, their family that that child belongs to has in their own home. This is the thing. It's too hard for parents on their own. Yes, of course, I speak to parents. I, I give them tips and advice on what you can do in the home. But this issue is so great. We are talking about a public health crisis that is deforming and warping our children, their attitudes to their bodies, sexuality, relationships, harming them in significant ways, destructive ways. This is a giant experiment. We've never seen it done before on our kids. We need our governments and our regulatory bodies to step up and act ethically, not put the vested interests of the porn lobby 
and the advertisers and the mega corporates, the big tech corporates ahead of the well-being of our young people and our children. That's why I say it takes a village. It needs everyone cooperating for the common good of our children and the community. Yeah, Melinda, we're going to take a break in, uh, and come back and ask you about what we can actually do and what the government can do as well. Uh, I just want to <laughs> highlight one thing that you've you've really flagged there, and that is that uh, consent education is insufficient because when we've got a sick culture, mm. you can you can wiggle one thread, but the rest of the tapestry is not going to be affected by it because there's there's just so much of it around. Uh, That's let's it. Let, let's take a really quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about what we can do as parents to help our kids to not be on these petitions and sharing these testimonials. It's the Happy Families Podcast. Imagine a home where discipline got results without anyone having to feel bad or in trouble. The Do's and Don'ts of Discipline is a webinar to help parents set limits with love, compassion and humanity. Find it now at happyfamilies.com.au slash shop. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And today we've been talking with Melinda Tankard Reist about this conversation that we're having. Na- nationally, national conversation about consent and, and helping our kids be safe in a, in a world that's flooded by pornography. Uh, you, you know, Melinda, I would love to get your take on what parents who are listening with fear in their hearts might do as they're listening to this conversation, if they're worried about how to talk to their children? What, what, do you, what do you recommend? So I recommend acting personally and acting collectively. Acting personally, obviously, having filtering. Obviously, we need to look at why we even give our children internet-enabled devices. We are handing our children hand grenades, and that hand grenade will blow up in their faces. Some parents will say, I need my child to contact me. Of course, why do they need a smartphone? They can contact you on a dumb phone, right? Because they're being exposed to torture porn, rape porn, sadism, bestiality and incest porn on their own devices, right? So... We, we, we've, got a, we've got our younger kids, uh, Space Talk Watch. Uh, there's no internet, mm-hmm. there's no social media. It's just a, a watch that can text and call only people right. that we agree with. And, and it there solves so many issues. Like It's a really, there really go. good thing. Um, obviously, modelling proper behaviour in, in the home. It's not always what we say, it's how we act. Uh, how does how does how do mum and dad relate to each other? If a, a son is speaking very badly towards a, a sister, is he watching uh, the violent games? Is he listening to violent music? Is that being tolerated? Because if that's being tolerated, then uh, your your son will take those uh, attitudes that he's learned and he will act out on them. You know, attitudes shape behaviours. We know this. Uh, so look at what's being modelled in the home, what's being tolerated in the home. Uh, what are you buying? Uh, you know, the kind of clothing... Uh, what are you allowing your children to be exposed to? Uh, the games, Instagram, you know, my organization, Collective Sharp, has exposed thousands of predators operating in plain sight on the accounts of schoolgirls on Instagram. And we're working with Instagram to try to address that. Uh, so know what your kids are doing, you know, don't just use this technology as a default babysitter. But then we have to act collectively. We have to respond as a community. We have to lobby our government, our regulatory bodies. Now, a whole year ago, a federal government uh, committee inquiry reported on an inquiry into the need for an age verification system. So that's a proof of age requirement, which would at least protect some children from exposure to pornography. Because right now there's no protection. You know, it's, it's the Wild West uh, and this would just be one blockage that would protect children from accessing these kind of sites. It's been a year without a government response to that inquiry. We need to know what the government is going to do with those recommendations. Uh, so ask your MP to find out what is going on. Why has it been a year with no response to that? Yes, there are some good things happening. We have the Safety Commission now and they've got some great resources and are doing good things in this space. But we need something else. It's too much. It's too hard. It's too harmful. It's time to act politically as well. Scott Morrison's yeah. been criticised recently for saying, I talked to my wife and had to imagine what it must be like for my daughters, and that's why I've changed my tune mm-hmm. on uh, on the Brittany Higgins case. Uh, mm-hmm. He's been 
bashed around the place for that. I, I don't have a political bone in my body. I will say whether he had to do that or not, what I'm interested in is the fact that he did and he changed his tune because of it. It's about empathy. And I don't care how we get to empathy. We've got to get people to empathy so that they'll have that respect. Yes, we absolutely do. And that's what we're losing. That's my biggest fear, actually, is the loss of empathy in the culture. Uh, I had a teacher tell me recently, you might recall where the case where um, a man took his life live on social media. He, he live streamed his yeah. killing of himself. And this teacher said something to me, which put chills up my spine. She said to me, the biggest concern for her was not that all the kids were talking about it and had seen it. And we were talking at that point, year sevens and eights. She said the fact was the, the lack of empathy, the lack of affect, uh, that it was just another meme. It was another online spectacle to talk about. And then you moved on to the next spectacle. Again, this is a tragedy for our children. We need to get back to that sense of empathy, understanding the suffering of another person, you know, walking in their shoes, feeling it from their perspective. Otherwise, you know, we are in big trouble. Melinda, I want to say this has been a great conversation. This has been a really hard conversation. There, were, we, We've talked about some really, really important issues and I think that yeah. um, it's, it's a conversation that we need to have ongoingly um, yeah. and so sad that we do, but it's so important. Yeah. But if people want to find out more about where they can go to get, um, you know, great information on how they can start to have these kinds of conversations with their Uh kids, where would you send them? Well, I'd love to people to check out my website, which is melindatankardreist.com and Collective Shout, the movement that I co-founded a decade ago to address these issues. Collective Shout for a world free of sexploitation. We've just celebrated our 10th anniversary and we equip and empower people to take action on these issues. And I also have a special uh, book offer, the two best resources I have found on how to talk to your kids about porn. This is a hard conversation. We would rather not have to have this conversation, uh, but we don't have that luxury. There's a vacuum there. Someone will fill it. We have to have these conversations with our children. A lot of parents wonder, how do I talk to my kids about this issue? How do I introduce the conversation? That's why I'm offering these two books. How to Talk to Your Kids About Porn is for the parent. Uh, it's easy, it's accessible, very simple, easy to read, very practical. And then there's a second book, Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, Porn Proofing Today's Young Kids. You actually read this book with your child and it helps to protect them from exposure. But if they are exposed, it opens up the conversation. What do you do? Here's some practical tips. Here's how to talk to mum or dad about it. Uh, We won't get angry. We won't get mad because the fact is it is inevitable that your child will see porn if they haven't already. Uh, here's how to stay controlled. Here's how to take a breath and have the conversation to help your child uh, in the hope that, you know, you can protect them not to see it again next time. So those two books go together and uh, I have a special deal on them at the moment. And I think, you know, these resources are needed more than ever. We've had the COVID lockdown and everyone talks about the COVID pandemic, of course, but here's another pandemic. And our kids have been even at more risk of sexual grooming, of of predators, of porn exposure due, due to the very long periods of lockdown, the terribly stressed parents. Uh, so um, I, I have this special offer and I'm hoping it will be of help to your listeners, uh, Justin and Kylie. Well, Melinda, amazing to have this conversation. Wish we could continue it, but our time is well and truly up. Melinda tankard Reist, author, advocate, and uh, just such a knowledgeable person about this topic. Somebody said a little while ago that we sort of skim across the big issues. In fact, we don't even talk about the big issues. I think that we've ticked that box today. Uh, We really hope that you've enjoyed the podcast. If you do, we would love to hear from you. You can email us, podcasts. That's podcasts with an S at happyfamilies.com.au or better yet, leave a five-star rating and review at Apple Podcasts. That way more people can find out about the podcast and help their kids be safer and happier. We appreciate the work of Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. He's our producer. Also, Craig Bruce, thank you, our executive producer. If you'd like more information about making your family happier, obviously, please check out Melinda's website. That's Melinda Tankard Reese. If you just Google her, you'll find her website uh, or visit happyfamilies.com.au. Thank you.